Hello, I'm Richard Murphy, and I'm working on a project which is called Sustainable Cost Accounting, and I want to talk about it because I think it's really important. We've already put out a video on what is happening with regard to climate change accounting at present and discussed what the weaknesses are in what is called the Task Force on Climate Finance Disclosures Initiative, which is headed by Mark Carney, who used to be head of the UK Bank of England. There are major weaknesses in that, as I've explained. It is not comprehensive, it is voluntary, and it doesn't bring the figures into the mainstream accounts of a company, which means that basically it's always treated as an tack on extra and not at the very core of what the company is accounting for. Now, I believe that's wrong. I was challenged by a couple of academics to work out whether we could actually bring climate change right into the core of accounting. In other words, onto a company's balance sheet. And a little over a year ago, I came up with the idea of sustainable cost accounting, which is now attracting quite a lot of interest and some companies are talking about trialing it. So what is this new idea that I've got? Well, it's really actually incredibly simple. What I'm saying is that a company should prepare a plan to become net zero carbon by a specified date. I would, of course, like that to be as soon as possible because that makes it more effective. But the government is saying around 2040. That plan would have to say how the company is going to eliminate carbon, subject to a couple of very important points. One is offsetting would not be allowed. Why? Well, because everybody can say they'll offset in that case, and of course there may simply be insufficient place in the world to plant all the trees that that would imply are required. So offsetting is not a possibility. And the other one is, secondly, nobody should assume when preparing their plan that a technology that doesn't work as yet will be available. So, for example, carbon capture and storage, which is what the oil companies are claiming will be the basis of their becoming net zero carbon is not proven to work as yet. And so I'm saying they can't use it in their planning. Now that's, you could say, unfair, but I also call it realistic. We're talking about the survival of life on Earth here. So we've got to plan for worst case scenarios. scenarios. A precautionary principle applies. And when they prepared this plan, my suggestion is that they have to cost it. They literally have to say, how much is it going to cost them to get rid of carbon in their company? Now that's a figure that is entirely within their control. This is really important. I'm not asking them to price the carbon they produce. I'm not relying on a carbon market. I'm not saying there's an artificial figure which we attach to carbon which we use for this purpose. I'm simply saying the job is get rid of carbon. It's entirely within your control how you do it. And this therefore is an accounting matter which you can dictate the terms on. Now that's important because it means once they've costed it, they can put this number into their accounts. And I'm suggesting that the number in question should go onto their accounts now. So if they work out that it's going to cost them, say, £3 billion to become net zero carbon compliant, and for some companies it will cost that much, then they must put a liability into their accounts for that full £3 billion at this moment. And then, as they spend the money, they must report their progress against the objective. And of course, there's two parts to that reporting. One is, are they becoming net zero carbon compliant, which is what we want them to do? And second, is it costing what they expect? Of course, if it costs more than they expect, or they have to revise their estimate upwards, they would record a loss as a result of their inability to manage carbon. And that's something we need to know. Is this company able to manage this process well or not? And this method of accounting will show that. And second, it will of course show, as a result, whether they're going to achieve the goal that we really want, no emissions. Now, this then brings the environment absolutely bang into the centre of financial reporting. It's not a peripheral issue, it's not a corporate social responsibility issue, it's a profit and loss issue, and it's even a solvency issue. Because there will be some companies who will be doing this, who will put a provision for the cost of becoming net zero carbon on their balance sheet and realise that they are insolvent. In other words, they haven't got enough money to meet their liabilities. They, at the present point of time, can't afford to become net zero carbon. Now, for those companies, there's a different challenge, not just becoming net zero carbon, but they'll have to ask a separate question, which is, can we raise the money to become net zero carbon? 
And whether or not they can answer that question determines something else. If they can raise the money, if they can put forward a credible plan that will convince their auditors that they can survive because money raising is an option for them, then that's fine. They can keep trading. But what if they can't? What if they haven't got a credible basis, either because it's not possible to make their business net zero carbon without offsetting and using existing technologies, or because they don't believe they can persuade markets to give them the money that's necessary? They then become what I call carbon insolvent. And we need to know which companies are carbon insolvent now. Because if a company is carbon insolvent, it means it can't make it into the new world that we're going to need to live in if we're going to survive. Its business is no longer viable if we are going to manage the world with net zero carbon. And so what those companies would have to do is wind up their affairs between now and the chosen date for compliance, 2040 or whatever, in an orderly and tidy fashion so that people can reorganise the economy to replace what they do with something which ensures that everybody can live safely into the future. This is fundamental to fu the future of accounting, it's fundamental to the future of business, it's fundamental to our own survival. That's why I think this is so important, and I'm pleased that some companies are showing real interest in it, as well as professional institutes. If this is of interest to you, well, thank you for watching. Please push the subscribe button on the screen below this video. Please follow me on Twitter, at Richard J. Murphy, and look at my blog, Tax Research UK, where there's more on this, as there also is on the blog of the Corporate Accountability Network, of which I'm also a director. Thanks for watching.